Welcome to episode number 11 of our series, Cost Management, How to Build Your Financial Model. Today will be the first part discussions about rolling forecast P&L, profit and loss. But I will be only discuss the basic concepts. Later, I will try to arrange a free workshop to show you in detail how to build the rolling forecast in practice. But what is a rolling forecast? As Asif Masani stated in his article, Best Practices in Implementing Rolling Forecast. Rolling forecasts provide a continuous forecast over a specific time horizon, usually 12 to 24 months. They move the actuals forward each month on a rolling basis, making it easier for decision makers to see what's happening in real time. So as you can see, the traditional budget is a 12 months planning with updating take into consideration the actual figures. So it could be considered as a static document to assess past performance. Again, to assess past performance. But on the other hand, forecast and ruling forecast are regularly updated throughout the forecast period time frame. For example, by applying three months actual plus nine months budget or forecast, or three months actual plus 12 months re-updating the forecast, which sometimes called rollover or rolling forecast. So for rolling forecasts, you will adjust the forecast to adapt the recent changes or trends. Also, we asked another expert, James Rimmer, which is better to support cost reduction plan, budget, forecast, or rolling forecast. And he stated that when it comes to cost reduction, I would look at standalone reporting as an appendix to the board report. For example, the plan was to save one million pounds on staff, have we? What was the forecast saving each month and how are we tracking? Typically, what you find is the savings never start when they were planned, however being able to see that slippage and seeing if the targeted monthly savings are being delivered needs additional reporting which relaying on performance on budget can hide. Now let's start the practical part. One way of ruling forecast is by using the historical data. Then add a simple growth rate from previous years. But again, don't forget that today I will only discuss the basic concepts. As you can see on the first sheet, the actual results of the up-to-date last 12 months from April 2022 to March 2023 the gross sales or revenue is equal the sales quantity multiplied by sales unit price. Also, below are the historical results for the last five years. We will use both tables to predict or forecast our ruling forecast. So the actual data, our historical data, is our assumptions. So now, it is generating our assumptions from our historical data. There are a lot of techniques and Excel functions to estimate our forecast assumptions. I will quickly show you an example of these techniques and how to use the Excel functions to estimate the forecast assumptions. But for details or for more details, you will need to watch again our previous 10 episodes of this series, especially the Two episode about the budget to down approach. Also, episode number two and three, the second series of Excel for FB and A. It's very important. On column C, I've linked the actual data of the up to date last 12 months from Sheet Actual. In column D, cell D15, I'll use the growth Excel function. Type equal growth, then select cell C3 to C14. Comma then select cell B3 to B14, 
then select cell B15, then enter. Now you've the forecasted revenue amount for April 2023, based on the historical growth rate. To do the same for the remaining 11 months of our rolling forecast, in cell C15 type equal D15, then copy the formula till cell C26. Now copy the growth formula of cell D15 and paste till cell D26. I've added also in column E the growth rate as a percentage of changes from last to current month. In cell G15 type equal forecast, then select cell B15 for the date of April. Comma then select C3 till C14 and press F4. Comma then select B3 till B14, press F4 then enter. Now copy the forecast formula in cell G15 and paste till cell G26. Also, in column H the forecast growth rate. Finally, we can also calculate the AAGR or the annual average growth rate in column J and K, you can watch episode number 2 to learn how to do that. Also, in the same video you can learn how to use the Excel function slope and intercept in the forecasting. You can repeat the same calculations in column N till V to forecast the variable costs also. Another Excel technique is to create a new worksheet to predict data trends. In columns X to Z, I have copied the same data, but in different date format, again, in different date format. For example, in cell C3 is the revenue for the end month of April, which means 30 of April. But for using the forecast sheet, I will copy the same data in column Y, but the date will be the first of next month. In other words, the revenue of end month of April is the same start month of May. Now select the range X2 till Y14 and click the forecast sheet button. Then change the forecast end date to be 1st of April 2024. Then press create. As you see, now you have created three forecast trends of the revenues. The first is basic forecast with lower and upper confidence form. Two scenarios. Repeat the same for the variable costs, and now you have the same forecast for the variable costs also. Now let's build our rolling forecasts by using the previous calculations. In cell B29 I've used Excel data validation drop-down list that includes three scenarios. Scenario A for the basic forecast, Scenario B for the lower forecast, and Scenario C for the upper forecast. The first three column D, E, and F are linked with the actual data. From column G to R I've applied Excel IFS function as follow. In cell G31 type equal IFS, then select cell B29 of the validation list and press F4, then equal and open double quotes and type scenario A. commas lookup and open parentheses G29, comma and select cell G13 to G25 in sheet revenue forecast.
comma, and select cell C13 to C25 in sheet revenue forecast. Don't forget to press F4 and close the parentheses. Do the same for Scenario B and Scenario C. Then do the same formula but for the variable by select the data from sheet VC forecast. Again, today is just an introduction, and I'll try to discuss these all in detail later. Now, take into consideration that in practical life, especially in the manufacturing companies, more complex calculations are used, not as this simple one. It will be depending on market studies and applying the experience of other departments in collecting purchases and service data, not just sales data. For example, in scenario one, that based on the company market share, the sales staff will build the revenue forecast, for example, on the following, on the following assumptions. The first one, for example, the market share and the market growth for the sales quantity, the price inflation and deflation based on market supply and demand policies. Also, you may plan your sales revenue as a factor of GDP, or some other metrics. The same will be applied for the variable cost by applying the inflation and the deflation. In the next episode, I will try to explain some examples of these complicated calculations in practice. Till this time, I'd recommend you read the following additional resources. First one is by Anders Lulindberg. Are you ready for a new perspective on planning and forecasting? The second article was by Rafe Lawson. Is now the time to ditch budgeting completely? By Profitability Analytics Center of Excellence. See you next video.